Hey everyone, Hello. and welcome back to the channel. You're right here with us, the Castaway Couple. Today we're thrilled to give you an exciting update on our dream home in the Philippines. Now I think it's been almost two weeks since our last video and things are moving rather quick. Now for those of you who have been tracking with us for a while, you'll know that our home has come a long way, especially in the last few months. And I guess our building journey is starting to draw near to a close. Now admittedly, it hasn't all been smooth sailing. We've had a few minor defects here and there, and some small items that did require rectification throughout the process. However, I can confidently say that all the issues raised were addressed and dealt with by our builders promptly and with little to no resistance. So, I'm pleased to say that at least with our particular builder, we honestly couldn't be happier with the results. And on that note, it's time to break out the sticky sauce. Ah, fuck. I missed. What does that mean? I missed. Now, no doubt that the thought on everybody's mind is about... <laughs> now, before you go getting more excited than a dog with rabies on heat... <laughs> We're not disclosing the cost of our build just yet. Given that we're still spending on some finishing touches and it simply wouldn't be fair to you if we gave you an inaccurate representation of the true final costs involved, at least with our build in its current state. Now remember, there is no one size fits all approach to building your home in the Philippines. And look, I've seen videos by many foreigners living in the Philippines with very, very mixed opinions on either ends of the spectrum. So, how much Skrilla? How much cheese? How much bread? How much money should you spend on your house in the Philippines? Oh, you got your fluffies on. Show me the fluffies. So honey, what's this stack of mess here in the corner? Can you tell us a little bit about that? These are my favorite things in our Philippine house. Fancy. I don't know why we purchased this kind of cooktop. Well, that's going to be your favorite. It's not as pretty. We have a cooktop here. It's, it's okay. It's nice. But this one, we I think we splurge a little bit. It's still a smeg. It's a 60 centimeter. Well, as you guys know, what we're talking about in this video is how much should you spend on your house in the Philippines? So, honey, I mean, essentially, why do you think we, we sort of... Uh, busted the budget a little bit and we went a little bit extra on these items but i guess the intended purpose for this house is to be our forever home this isn't you know some kind of temporary investment or a bed and breakfast or something that we're going to be leasing out to someone this is longevity we're thinking yeah. about longevity because we don't want to purchase an item where we want to replace it the next two years or a few years we wanted something to last we wanted to save money from replacing an item over and over 
I personally think if you're going to invest, invest money in a home, you need to buy products that aren't plastic, that aren't cheap, and that are gonna last you a long time just to save you the headache of replacing it, especially if you don't know what your income is going to be or how you're gonna go. You're actually better off having a more expensive product in the beginning. Correct. That you know is going to give you longevity rather than buying cheap garbage. Now I know not everybody can buy, you know, a Bosch and I know not everybody can spend that much money on items like this. And that's perfectly okay, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But anyone can buy it if they really wanted to. My theory is if you can, again, this is a personal thing, if you can do it then I don't think it's a waste of money, basically, you know? And there's, there's a lot of vloggers out there that are saying, Quality you know, over make sure you spend the amount of money that you're happy to lose. But I'm of, the, I'm of the principle that no matter what you do in the Philippines, property anywhere in the world is always going to be an investment. Even though in the Philippines it might be harder to get your investment back, I still don't think that property anywhere in the world is a waste of money. I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely, I would agree to that thought. It's only a Brevil, but it has its um, upgraded color. This is their new, new um, what's this model? They've just recently released the gold I'll and turn white. That off. That's really bright. The gold and white color, and I really, really like it because it's going to match in our um, house. The theme. color scheme, yeah, the color scheme and then matching kettle too. And they're matching too. Have we got a like picture of that up there? We've got a kettle also the same color, the same brand. So that was a fair bit of money, yeah. but it's it's all it's all stainless steel. None of this is plastic. So again, it's something that's gonna last a long time. And then in the back there I also bought a um, 90 centimeter yeah um, range hood for above the cooktop. So as you saw in the video, all the uh, cabinetry is going in. Most of the appliances other than this is already in the Philippines. We've purchased the oven, um, the built-in microwave, we've got the washing machine, we've got the refrigerator. Dishwasher. Sorry, yet yeah, dishwasher. No, dishwasher is, I think, not very necessary. Yeah. I guess, I guess wealth is relative, yeah? Yeah, so it's just us, it's, it's our... Yeah, to some place. people, to some people we've spent too much money, but to other people on the other end of the spectrum, we're, we're peasants, you know? <laughs> so, like, it's all relative, guys. So you don't really get too caught up with who's saying what. Just, you know your situation best and do what's going to be the best for you. Now, the biggest theory for us was, if we're going to build a house in the Philippines and let's say we ever do run into a situation where we need to sell, I figure if you're going to be selling, and with the amount of foreigners that are actually moving to the Philippines these days, you're actually better off tailoring a home with the modern Western amenities and building to that level rather than building to a Filipino level. Because if you're going to get your money back, you're gonna to have to get it from most likely a foreign customer. With features. Yeah, from a, a, a Filipino, unless they're extremely rich and have some kind of business from Manila, they're not gonna come and buy your house with all those luxuries and amenities simply because they're not going to be able to afford it. I'm not saying that as a blanket statement, but majority of Filipinos will not be able to afford a home like that. So your only chance of recovering your money is from a Westerner who's going to retire there and wants all the modern creature comforts that a Western home has to offer, right? Yeah, I don't know guys, I suppose that's it. That's all I have to say on that topic for the time being. Um, this is coming with us this July. So we've also got a few boxes that are ready and packed for, uh, for a Balik Bayan box. Yeah, Balik Bayan shipment up to the Philippines when we're ready to actually relocate for good. So, I mean, yeah, guys, you know your situations. You, you do you. Whatever makes you happy, whatever your long-term goals are, just figure that out, write it down if you have to, and work out what's going to work for you. Um, don't be afraid to enjoy your money. You've earned it. You've worked hard for it. There's nothing wrong with that and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Uh, if for whatever reason you have had some past experiences where you might not, you know, trust the systems there or you might not trust who, you know, you're buying your home off or who you're investing with, then of course that's a perfectly valid reason and don't invest more than what you're afraid to lose, um, if anything at all. So it all comes down to personal preference, personal choices and experiences and it's up to you guys to do your due diligence and discern for yourselves what's going to be the right decision for you. Um, other than that, I guess I'll take it back to the studio. 
and we'll go through some of the pros and cons of the Australian property market versus the Filipino property market and hopefully that can really give you a, um, a much clearer picture of the principalities and the functionalities of both markets. Um, actually, you know what guys, I think that just about does it and we're going to wrap up this video for today. Um, so, so far we've given you a small insight into the progress of our house and more on that to come uh, next month in July. So time is ticking, it's going quickly. But um, we just wanted to share our personal approach to deciding on how much money to spend on a home in the Philippines. So in the next video, or part two, we'll dive deeper into the comparisons between the Western and Philippine property markets. Otherwise, this video will just blow way beyond what we think would be effectively engaging. And lately, I've really been trying to recalibrate my approach to the amount of information that I'm cramming um, into each video. So. Part two will be, hopefully, to give you a clearer picture of the real estate framework in the Philippines to ultimately assist you in making a more informed decision that's tailored to your unique situation, right? So, guys, look, if you found this video helpful, uh, please make sure to hit that like button, share and subscribe so you don't miss out on part two where we'll be covering even more crucial details for anyone who's worried about how much of their hard earned they should be spending on a home in the Philippines. So once again guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.